After decompression, that typically becomes 8 or 9 gigabytes. But the unit itself is capable of outputting as much as 22 gigabytes a second. Say what? 22 gigabytes a second, 22 gigabytes a second, if the data happened to compress particularly well. Yo, this is your favorite friendly neighborhood, Toronto. And today we're going to be talking about the Velocity architecture. It's been back in the news lately because um, my fellow YouTuber, who is also Canadian, I'm pretty sure he's from Toronto, D-Batch, ended up making a video talking about why the velocity architecture is faster than the PlayStation 5. So it's been getting a lot of traction lately and a lot of people have been going back and forth. And of course, this brought back out the Xbox fanboys in full stride talking about how the PS5 is weak and it's nothing again because of the numbers that D-Batch has presented in his video. So as you can see by the beginning of this video, I feel like a lot of people forgot theoretically speaking that mark certainly did say if people optimize their coding like really good they can actually get up to 22 gigabytes per second but i'm not going to be out here holding my hat on to that we just have the numbers that were officially released which was 2.4 uh, raw and 4.8 compressed for the xbox series x and then over on the ps5 side we have 5.5 gigabytes per second that is raw and then eight to nine gigabytes when it's compressed. Now, D-Batch went into a, a lot of in-depth detail on why he was crunching the numbers that he crunched, uh, giving a, good, a, a lot of good in-depth explanation on what each part of the velocity architecture is doing. So D-Batch knows what he's talking about. Um, he's just come from it from a perspective that at the end result, don't really agree with because again, if we were going to look at the theoretical number of either the 12 or 15 gigabytes per second, when everything is fully optimized, then you also then have to account for the 22 gigabytes per second that Mark Cerny did say if everything was fully optimized when it came to the compression for the Kraken. And I'm not gonna go back and forth talking about these numbers that we actually don't have the systems to, and the games to compare directly to see how these things are performing and how developers are actually using them. But I do wanna emphasize and just kind of hone in on the fact that it's so funny when Everybody was thinking that, yeah, the PS5 is going to be about double the speed of the IO throughput than the Series X. Those Xbox fanboys are coming out. Oh, it means nothing. They're just trying to find something to use because they know the CPU isn't as strong and the GPU isn't as strong and the architecture doesn't mean much. But somehow, now that somebody has the ideal that the throughput may be more powerful than the PS5, which I personally doubt, but let's just say it is now it's like yo look at all the things that the architecture could do like it could really expand your games no friggin duh like that's what we were saying the whole time but you guys didn't want to accept it because it looked like you guys were at half the capacity of what the ps5 was able to do right it's just funny to see how that stuff all works out and then that even goes back into the whole phil spencer talk about games not being held back but games are definitely held back by the previous generation i could promise you that when it comes to the graphics those things are not held back right because you could always increase your settings again like your lighting capabilities your shadow details how far your draw distance is those things are always interchangeable but the design of your games is held back by previous generations that is why like just ask yourself why do you think Microsoft is no longer going to support the Xbox One in a year or two because they're trying to push their gaming forward because continue to support those systems will hold back the games that they're going to plan on making, right? It's just, it's, there's simple questions that you just have to ask yourself and you will see that's what, what it is. As a game dev student myself, I can promise you games are held back by older technology as technology advances. It's the same reason why you don't have GTA 5 on ps2 like why ever not support an order system if it's not going to hold back the games that you're designing now right makes no sense as i digress uh, i'm not gonna make this too much of a long video but uh i just did want to highlight the fact that yes uh it makes sense how dbatch got to his 12 or 15 gigabytes per second but again that has to be compared to the 22 gigabytes per second of optimized compression not 
the eight to nine gigabytes compression, which are more realistic numbers that both Microsoft and Sony came out with when they showed their numbers. So I'm actually very interested on in hearing your guys' perspective on why you guys think that games are not going to be held back by previous generation or why you think they will be held back by previous generations. Because um, I'm just a guy that likes understanding why people think the way they think and how they think uh, is great for a good conversation. And that's the only way we get to actually understand each other better without all this vitriol that's being thrown, especially on the internet. Um, I just want to thank everybody for making it through to the end of this video. Please share, like, and subscribe hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of the new videos that get posted it really does a lot in helping me grow this channel i will have all the details on where you can follow everything toronto in the description that's everything for now so it's not bye but i see you later on the next one and i'm out